<laughs> Talking about your father, Groucho Marx. God, what a name, what a man, what a talent, what a personality. I mean, going back to show business, Groucho Marx, first of Hollywood films, what was his very first? First Hollywood film was made in Astoria, Long Island. Right, New York. <laughs> it was called Coconut. Yeah. yeah, called Coconuts. Coconuts. And then while he was... Was that his very first? His first Coconuts? movie, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, he had a show before that called I'll Say She Is, but they, that was a review. There was no movie made of that. Right, right. Then they did Coconuts, and that was sold to Paramount. I, I think they had a five-picture deal at that point. And then he, while he was playing Animal Crackers on Broadway... Right. He was shooting coconuts in Astoria during the daytime. Shows you what energy they had in those days of shooting a movie in the daytime and doing the play at night. <laughs> and looking at him later in life, uh -huh. when he was only 40 or 45, he was always tired around the house. Was he really? I, when I was going to Beverly High. Well, he was depressed all the time because he was having trouble with my mother. He was a very good father, but he, but my mother was a drinker, and he didn't like a drinking, and he didn't like a wild Hollywood life, and she was much younger than he was. Uh -huh. and, she wanted to go out to the Trocadero and all those places, <laughs> and he wanted to stay home because he'd been on the stage all his life right. at night. So this was his first opportunity to be home. He had a pool table, and he loved to play pool with me, and he loved to have dinner at home. And then he liked to sit down and play Gilbert and Sullivan uh -huh. on the phonograph and sing along with them. And he loved to read. But my mother didn't like that sedentary life. Uh -huh. And that's what caused him to be... Uh, he got depressed because I guess he wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, was it a happy household? Would it wasn't say? until my drink, my mother's drinking got to be in the alcoholic stage. Then uh -huh. there was fights every night, and mm -hmm. she'd come in later at dinner, and they'd have a big argument uh -huh. at dinner, and the, me and my sister would wish to hell we were out of there. Would you say you had a hard uh, childhood then? No, I or didn't, because by the time they were starting to really have a bad time, I was getting older. Oh, okay. And I was a tennis player then, and I yeah. had my own interests, and I was trying to get uh -huh. out of Beverly High and become a tournament tennis player. You, 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 came to, you just went to Beverly High? I went to Beverly High for four years, the only school I've ever gone to straight through, because up to then, my father was traveling all over the country. Uh -huh. And I'd just start in one school, and then I'd be yanked out and taken to another school. And I had a hard time getting any decent grades that way uh -huh. because I was never knew where I was or what class I was in. Uh -huh. But I had a good time, and he was a good father. And as a matter of fact, he he helped me with a lot of the writing I did at Beverly High. I, I uh, Matter of fact, I remember winning an American Legion essay contest that he helped me write. Did he really? <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. He was a good writer. Uh -huh. And he always re read over all my homework assignments. and. Mm -hmm. uh, things like that and corrected the English because he wanted to be a uh -huh. writer himself. Oh, he did? Oh, yeah. Tell me about Harpo. No, Harpo was a... Uh, what kind of guy was he? He was quiet, not an intellect. Uh, everybody thought he was because he hung around the round table group in the Algonquin in New York, right. but he really was, and he really wasn't much of a reader and he wasn't a writer either. Uh -huh. I remember he once sent my father a telegram on his birthday and all it said was no message, Harpo. <laughs> no message but Harpo. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, he was nice. He was a family man uh -huh. and he loved to practice the harp and he uh -huh. loved to paint. Uh -huh. And he loved to play croquet, and he loved to be around the house, and he loved his family. Uh -huh. Coming to Hollywood, uh, uh, Beverly Hills High, as Harpo, I mean, as Groucho Marx's son, a lot of kids kid, kid around with you about that? Well, in those days, there wasn't a great deal of that, because the, strangely enough, the Marx brothers weren't as big Quiet. then they weren't, really. as, as, as they seem to be now. In other words, right. there were a lot of big stars in Hollywood, then right. Gables and Clark and yeah, right. Robert Taylor and everything. Right. And while the Marx Brothers were big, they, people looked down on comedies, really. So the Marx Groucho didn't have that aura of greatness about him then. And he wasn't too happy with being a Marx brother. He wasn't? So, well, you know, once uh, yeah. in a while I got the, you know, you're the son yeah, of Groucho, right. that right, kind right, of right, bit. Right, right. And if I wrote a... If I uh, played in the tennis tournament and won it, it or upset a big player, it would be son of Groucho beats oh, Jack see. Kramer, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah. In the beginning, it kind of kind of Did annoys you, you annoy you, because yeah, you don't seem to be getting any recognition yourself. But uh -huh. finally, uh, you just have to put up with it and realize if someone that big is your father, you have to appreciate it too, because you get a lot of advantages out of it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, so writing. What made you, what made Arthur get into writing? Well, my father, basically, he said, don't he, be an actor. He uh, did? He didn't encourage you to be an actor? No, he didn't, he didn't want, want me to be. He, he didn't, didn't mind. Did you I, want it to be an actor? No. He, oh, but okay. he, he just started right out 
saying uh, he knew a lot of sons of actors who couldn't make it because they just wanted to be in show business because their parents were and they really didn't have any talent. Right. So he used to say to me, look, if you have a great acting talent, that's fine. He said, but if you just want to be an, an actor, because I am, don't, because it's a rotten business anyway. Uh -huh. And he, in those days, I guess it was, and he'd come out through vaudeville where it was pretty rough. Right. It's not like today where you're suddenly making $7 million a picture if you happen to hit it lucky. Right, right. And he never made that kind of money. But he always encouraged me to be a writer. He said, all my friends are writers. And, uh, and uh, uh -huh. you know, he pointed them out. And he, he, he was always kind of funny about it. He said, look, they're all making 15, 20 two thousand twenty five hundred a week and they don't have any great talent so you ought to be able to do that too that's how he used to put it i was sort of discouraged that my first book didn't make much money uh -huh. uh, and i got a call from ted strauss who was the editor of colliers uh -huh. and he said your father's very big on television he said how about writing a piece for us about your father uh -huh. and i said well no i've always avoided having anything to do with him up till now <laughs> i don't think i want to do that <laughs> and he said well look you've had a novel published you've had a lot of magazine stuff published right. already uh, it's no big deal it's, it, nobody's going to think what the worst for you if you do uh -huh. that and you can write it the best uh -huh. so i wrote it and they loved it so much they gave me twice as much as they offered me uh -huh. and then simon and schuster saw it they had published my first book and uh -huh. they said we want to write a book about your father uh, and i said no <laughs> i did turn them down again uh -huh. and they gave me the same routine well you've already had a book published and what uh -huh. difference does it make you, uh -huh. you you can do it best so i wrote it and uh my father said go ahead and do it your father agreed it's okay he yeah okay? he said fine he said there won't be any money in it no one's interested in me uh -huh. and uh so I never even showed it to him until I finished the whole thing. Uh -huh. And, and uh, he, I got help from him. I didn't, uh, I didn't try to uh, put anything over on him. Right. Matter of fact, I say, you know, there are lots of things in his life I didn't know about before I was born that he mm -hmm. helped me with. Uh -huh. But I didn't show him the manuscript because knowing how he was, he was pretty picky and he'd probably tear the whole thing apart. And right. I said, well, wait till someone buys it and then I'll show it to him. So the Saturday Evening Post picked it up for an eight-part serial of $40,000, $45,000, which was right. a lot then. Oh, God, yes. That really started me on my way. And uh, then I figured I'd show it to him. He couldn't uh -huh. help him. He'd, he'd have to like it. Uh-huh. He got furious when he read it, and he said, you treated me scurrilously. I looked silly in this book and everything. And, uh -huh. and he started to sue me. He said he was your going dad's, to sue Your yeah, own dad tried to sue, sue you? Me, and I had to <laughs> fake it out, and I had to get my own lawyer. And I didn't think he really would, but, but it went on for about four months. Did he really try to sue you? Yeah, I had to get a lawyer, and he got a lawyer. And finally, we <laughs> sat down all together, and I said, look, I'm not going to change this book. He uh -huh. wanted me to change the whole book. I said, how can I change it? They gave right, me $45,000 right. because I like it so much. And I also said, you, I wrote Wrote such a, I made him look like such a nice right, fella right, right. in it that that's why they took it. At first, they didn't even want to read it according to my agent because uh -huh. they thought he was the old Groucho character, uh -huh. the womanizer and everything. So was anyway, he, was he a womanizer? No, probably well, like women, but he was one, one at a time. You know. Yeah, but you know, he, wasn't, he wasn't a cheater he wasn't. on his wife. That's what I mean. Yeah, no, okay. he was very good okay. about that. So. Uh, he was a good family man. He was a good family yeah. man. So finally I figured out a way. I said, I got two sets of galleys from the Saturday Evening Post. And uh -huh. I gave him a set and I said, you here, make your changes. <laughs> and then I got my own set and I made uh -huh. my own little changes and uh -huh. sent them in. And then I took the changes from him and he had them written uh -huh. all over the margins and everything. And I just took it and threw it in the wastebasket on the way out. Uh -huh. He never knew the difference. He was just a power play. He wanted to show that he was uh -huh. still my father. Uh 